Grizzlies fans, the Grizzlies are back on the road today just for one little game in Indiana. They are playing where the All-Star game will be. I love Scott's hoodie. Got to. I had to bring it out for you today, KJ. I love that. I love Got it. To. First thing I noticed. Um, and although these two teams have played once in the preseason, once in the regular season, the Grizzlies won both. Everything comes with a little bit of a grain of salt, I'll say. The Grizzlies are on a three-game win streak. The Pacers have won two games in a row versus the Suns and the 76ers. The injury reports are really big in today's game, and that's been the case for the Grizzlies for a while now. Um, all the regular people are out. Dez, Jaw. I've last time we played it was Jaw's first home game against Indiana. Um, so Dez, Jaw, Stephen Adams, Brendan Clark, everyone. And it's also included Luke Kennard tonight. For um, the Pacers, their big guy, their all-star starter, yeah. <laughs> is out tonight as well. So although we played last month, totally different teams coming into today's matchup. Absolutely. And it's it's a frustrating thing, right? Even if you don't look at the laundry list of Memphis players out, just look at Jaw and Tyrese. Like the two rising stars, next faces of the league potentially – and they're not even available in this one. So that's unfortunate. The other thing that comes to mind is last year and what Jaw did had his what he said was his best dunk ever, where he threw it down here at Gainbridge Fieldhouse. So that's unfortunate. I guess you got some former Indiana players that are still on the Grizzlies roster. But outside of that, I think for Indiana fans, no Tyrese. You do have the excitement, which I'm sure we'll get into, is the addition of Pascal Siakam. But outside of that, you're right. This matchup has lost some of its luster just because of who is not available today. Yes, but let's go right into it then. Because who is available is Jaron Jackson Jr. for the Grizzlies and Pascal Siakam of the very new Indiana Pacers. That matchup is going to be fun to watch. If if nothing else, them going head to head because Jaron is pretty exclusively playing the five now that everyone is injured, and obviously Pascal uh, and him haven't battled a ton because he's been on the East and Jaron's been on the West. But I love watching these two guys play. Yeah, and the thing with Pascal is he's been guarding several positions. He's started at the four, and he will um, with Miles Turner at the five. But you'll see different combinations, and that's one of the things I found most interesting over these last ten games when Tyrese has been out of there. Is I think we've got a be better glimpse of the coaching staff and the little tricks they might have up their sleeves, and or maybe just how deep on the you know playbook and and creativity that they've been able to do, in particular on the defensive end and, and so much of that too is just trying to make use of what they can with what they have right now like watch Jenny Busick on the Pacers bench um she was she was like calling out switches now it might be a little different just because of personnel let's be honest but that was against um uh with 76ers and with Phoenix Suns this last game their big three who went up for 91 of 117 points when they played a week ago so it was Devin Booker scored the most points in franchise history here. So they were doing all kinds of scheming, trying to get the ball out of Devin's hands and, and things like that. But right now they're just trying to get by, stay afloat without Tyrese. And they have to their credit last year, one in nine during the stretch, basically during the same period of time without Tyrese right now, five and four. All right. I'm going to talk about offense with the Pacers because it's unbelievable, but I'm going to go with a positive for the Grizzlies first. And that is the Pacers defense. Uh, admittedly, not a great defense as a team. 26, they rank in the NBA in terms of defensive rating. The Grizzlies have had 30 or more assists in those three games that they've won to make that three game win streak. Um, you mentioned last time we played, which was just late in December that, you know, they, they struggle a lot with guarding, guards wings and although the grizzlies have a huge injury list it's still those guards and wings that are doing most of the scoring take away jaron jackson jr vince williams jr gg jackson um coming into guys that that maybe the pacers aren't so familiar with i know they're not superstars but there is less tape on them do you see that still being something to worry about if you're a pacers fan I think so, but to a much lesser ascent and for a couple of reasons. I think when we talked last, they were just starting to maybe figure it out, maybe get things going. Because before that, I, I was candid. Like, the defense was atrocious, like yeah. embarrassing. It's better than that. In fact, it's average, which is great. Dang it. <laughs> that's it. Now, that's just moving forward. And in doing so, it's funny how much they've sacrificed some of their offense 
to okay. be better defensively. Now, that's still an issue, but in a smaller sample size of like 15 games, they're roughly like 17th. So that really speaks to kind of the improvements and in, in such of what they're doing. But you are right. As a whole, it's not a great defensive team. Just being average, though, for this group is a huge success. And uh, offensively, though, uh, some of the things that they have lost and need to get better at, and it was emphasized in this last game, and it should be in this one, is going back to playing fast, getting out in transition. You know, I, I, they were one of the fastest teams. I think they've they're they might still be one, but they're right there. Um, but those are the things that has suffered just a little bit. But and then in terms of guarding wings, Pascal Siakam coming into the fold certainly helps in that mix. Yeah, his wingspan, his length, all attributes that the Pacers did not have. And while you're, you'll miss Tyrese for his star power, you won't miss him for his defense. So that you don't get a drop off right there because he's such a talented offensive player and would always often guard like the fourth or best offensive player on the opposing team. Yeah, on the offensive end, the Pacers lead the league in points per game, field goal percentage, assists. There you go. Game, yep. Points in the paint. Um, and although Tyrese is unbelievable, um, I think he had 17 or 14 last time we played. He he's not the entire team. Like even without him, this team is so good offensively. They scored 130 points in those in both those games or more, uh, in both those games that they won leading up to this game. Uh, offensively, who do the Grizzlies need to look out for? Yeah, it'll start with Pascal. I just dropped 31, I think, the other night against Phoenix, and is starting to find his groove. He's only had one practice with this team. In his first week with the group, as as you know very well, like practice time is very limited. And if you get a walkthrough or a shoot around in now and then, it's a bonus. And that's what they face for the first couple of games. A lot of Pacers fans initially were like, what is this? You acquire this guy and you lose your first three games. It's like, one, your best player is out. And two, think about the the intricacies of offense, defense, and how they run things. Now, terminology is different usually from stop to stop, even though you're doing the same yeah. type of thing. He's only been on one team. So like learning something new is yep. not something he's like been accustomed to in his career. He's been with the Raptors. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the unlearning like of the, of, Hey, I got to do this. I think it's wrong, but this is what my coaching staff's telling me, whatever that might have been, for example. So yeah, he's starting to settle in. He's the number one offense, uh, uh, number one focus offensively i'll be curious what miles does uh going against jaron jackson jr an indie product by the way which is kind of cool and i think he went off and has done great things and it's been fun to see his development um and then outside of that the two kind of guys that have really risen here lately andrew nimhart he, he's dealing with back issues but he, he's been working with this physical therapist the last couple of games and in doing so averaging about 20 points per game he's really put shouldering a lot more of the load offensively with tyrese being out and aaron neesmith probably a, a name people are starting to recognize a little bit more in the league he was buried on the bench in boston part of a trade that basically sent malcolm brogdon out but he's become the best part of that trade for the Pacers. And he's kind of the Pacers utility guy, all hustle guy will do anything. And in the off season, they re-signed him to a deal. That's now looking even better. All right. Let's end it with this Scott. I'm going to, I'm going to change it up. You've done too many of these. We've been asking the same question, <laughs> changing it up. The one thing that the Pacers cannot allow the Grizzlies to do if they want to win tonight. The first thing that comes to mind is allow Jaron to just dominate and have incredible success. Go for a, a 30 and 12 type game. The other thing that also comes to mind, just because you kind of referenced it at the beginning as well, is when you're playing these unknown guys is to take them lighter. It's a Sunday afternoon game. Things are a little bit different. You're looking ahead, by the way, their next game Tuesday at Boston. So that's great as a whole. On top of that, forget the in-season tournament. Without that, this was their one game scheduled to be on national TV. So I always get a little bit fearful. A matinee game that looks a little bit and feels a little bit different. You got a national TV game coming up. It could be the return of Tyrese. You do not want to overlook a team like this. And you, I, I laugh because you also mentioned like Gigi Jackson. I remember watching him at the Fieldhouse uh, when the Mad Ants had a G League game like a month or two ago. And now he's needed in seemingly doing quite well right yeah. now. And as the youngest guy in that draft class, I remember studying and talking about him and he's just, he's just so young and raw, but for him to get this, these reps is huge in his young career. Yeah. He's been playing, uh, he's been playing really, really well. He's been playing very well as a literal teenager in this NBA. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Scott, 
Let's do it. The game is at 2.30, everyone. I want to stress that. Make sure you're watching. It's at 2.30 Central Time.